to start with, it all seemed so very easy. I saw an advert on the TV and uh, saw this young starving child in Uganda and decided to pay a standing order into an account to World Vision. Um, three years later, I found out it wasn't quite what I thought it was. It annoyed me so much that I uh, decided I was going to do something about it. Uh, I stopped the uh, standing order, uh, went to Africa that year on a family holiday and found a worthy cause. Um, still to this day, that worthy cause is Vincent's family and uh, we're the greatest of friends now. Vincent was actually a security guard at our hotel and I got to know him over the course of the holidays and I uh, uh, wanted to my boys to see the real Africa. You know, we've gone to the hotels with the infinity pool and eat as much as you like, but that's nowhere near the real Africa. The scenery's right, but the actual feel of it's wrong. So I asked Vincent to uh, take us into his village and uh, he took us back to his home and uh, met the family and uh, the rest is history, really. Um, the deal was that we'd start with sponsoring Theo, uh, Theo Poulos, uh, through school and then progress on to the daughter, um, Miriam, and finally, um, a few years ago, um, Nimrod popped out and uh, he's now just starting school, he's five years old, so we've got all three on the go, um, but it's been an absolute pleasure because every year I get the school reports and uh, yeah, and they're doing really, really well, top of the class, um, so it's been a real pleasure. It was seven years before I returned to Kenya, this time under very different circumstances and with a new partner called Petra. We uh, visited Vincent and his family in the ghetto of Mombasa. We were staying on the North Beach in a beautiful hotel. It's the deprivation that we saw at this, uh, in, in this ghetto that made us really think it's about time we, we, we did something. We discussed it quite a bit. Um, we decided that we were going to do some sort of a project, but we needed inspiration. We didn't know what. During the month long stay, we uh, took the family on the safari, uh, which was a, a real culture shock for the children, especially Miriam, who um, in the hotel, she kept filling up her pockets when she went to the buffet uh, because she thought she wasn't allowed to go up again. Anyway, we, um, we we did a couple of safari lodges and then when travelled all the way up to uh, Vincent and Caroline's family's family home in Kipsomoite. Um And we stayed in the mud hut there, which was a, a fantastic experience. The family were all uh, Seventh-day Adventists, so on the Saturday they invited us to go to, ch go to church because they wanted to show us to all the, all the village and uh, wanted them to greet us. Uh, because we were the first Chumbindets, white people who'd been in the village for many, many years. Anyway, when we arrived at the church, it was like Posh and Bex turning up, unbelievable. We were absolutely surrounded by hundreds of screaming kids all trying to touch us and pull Petra's poor hair. Um, it was quite, a, a, quite an experience yet again. Anyway, um, after the service had finished and we'd had been greeted and it, all the type of thing had gone on, we, were, uh, we went outside and we were sort of stood around and we saw these mud huts that were at the back behind the church and uh, I asked the, the pastor and one of the uh, village elders what the mud huts were for. I thought it was for animals um, and they said it was a school. At that very moment uh, Petra shot me a glance and uh, straight away I thought I know what she's thinking and we found our project. Girls, you ready? After three. Yes. One, two, three. Dum 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 da 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 dum. Just what makes that silly old ant think he'll move a rubber tree plant? Everyone knows an ant can't move a rubber tree plant, but he's got. He's got He's got high apple pie in the sky. Hope so anytime you're feeling low, instead of letting go, just remember that and Whoops Whoops goes another rubber tree. Whoops goes another rubber tree plant. 
Okay, girls. Once there was a silly old ram, thought he'd punch a hole in a dam. No one could make that ram scram. He kept a button that damn cause he had. So any time you're feeling bad, instead of feeling sad, just remember that ram. That's so good. All oh, problems just a toy balloon. They'll be bursted soon, then they're bound to go pop. classroom? Yes. Good. Follow me. I came here in the year 2016 and actually the school was in a pathetic position. The buildings 
were all mud walled. The floors were very dirty. The chairs were not just the desks were really in a bad condition. But now, since Mr. Dungan, when you came to our school, we really saw a lot of changes. First of all, we had a building which had stalled for some for, for so many years. You completed it. And we really appreciate it. That was the first building which was permanent in our school. That was the first permanent building in our school and we really felt there were so many changes because two classes are now complete and the pupils are using it already. And we are expecting maybe at the end of this month we will use the story building that you have that is undergoing construction right now. So I think uh, we really appreciate your work, Mr. Mr. Duncan, and your colleagues. We appreciate those who are supporting you from abroad. I learned that others are from Germany, others are from England. We appreciate them all over the world. Whoever has actually assisted us to contribute something small for this project. Hello everybody, um, I'm back in the classroom again, um, 56 years old now, back in the classroom in Kipsamoite. This is the classroom I came into two years ago and saw the devastation of what kids had to learn in, with holes in the wall, um, the blackboard barely writable, dirt on the floor, and these rickety old benches to learn on. But they turn up every single day. First thing in the morning, they're here at seven o'clock, and they're here most days till five o'clock in the afternoon. I barely made school. I used to be at my uncle's farm down on the beach, anything to avoid school. And we had the most beautiful classrooms, and we were quite spoiled. But I wasn't interested in learning. And, uh, and it saddens me now to think back that I didn't take those opportunities. But hey, I've done other things in other ways. So, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's made a difference that me learning in a different way has maybe got me here today. And looking at these kids and the opportunity that um, you guys who are giving money uh, is affording to them makes a massive, massive difference. So I just want to say a big heartfelt thank you to everybody who's given a few, few pounds, a lot of money, just general support and sharing our videos because this, uh, this project is really changing lives and I feel very humbled by you know, just being part of it. Um, it's working, I've just spent some time with the kids in the classroom over there. One wants to be a lawyer, one wants to be a doctor, a nurse. They've got dreams, they're in a little community that's miles away from anywhere. Um, where unemployment is very high, but they have dreams. So by you giving this money, helping to build their classrooms, will hopefully make their dreams come true. So that's what I want to say. Keep giving and thanks a lot.